host of the show full team today uh chrissy is back in studio hello um better <laughs> than ever obnoxious. uh how are you doing chrissy <laughs> i'm very excited i'm so excited because ali and amanda like we've talked over facetime we've talked over the phone we've talked on video screen and now i got to like physically meet them which is super exciting they're still as awesome as they were on all those other devices but like in yeah. human form they're even better Allie and Amanda are with us as well. Hello, ladies. We have a, a, a fantastic recap for you. Uh, Dave Holmes joins us. Uh, for those of you what who don't know who Dave is, Dave uh, used to be a VJ on MTV. I mean, back in the like day. legend. I mean, I, I, we, we've gotten to be friends through Twitter o- over the years. And I was, I was like, God, you're like, I know you. Like, you're, like Daisy you're cool days. to me. Yes. Yes. He was a rock. He, I mean, he so, wasn't a rock star, but he was with the rock stars, which made him yeah. a rock star to me. Always with the T-shirt and the jacket. Yes. Very, very, uh, very trendy man. He was recently, if you've watched the, the Britney Spears documentary on Hulu, he was one of the people who commentated as someone who covered Britney yep. Spears during that period of time. Uh, he is an editor for Esquire magazine uh, and an author and just a, all around uh, funny and talented guy who was gracious with his time and sat down. Also a Bachelor fan. Bachelor fan. Uh, has the been detail. over the years. Very detailed. Uh, detailed and bachelor. we have a really fun That's and wonderful so recap good. I think you will all enjoy. We cover a ton. Uh, we couldn't even get to it all so much that uh, we forgot to mention. Who, was it Was it Serena who called Matt Laffy? Someone yeah. described Matt as Laffy. We're Laffy. I think we're Laffy together. He's Laffy. And I was like, yeah, those two people don't know who each other are. Is Laffy even a word? I don't know, like Laffy Taffy? Taffy Laffy like, Taffy? Well, he's, he's Laffy. I don't he know. Called him Laffy. Laffy. Adjective rare, <laughs> informal. <laughs> Tending to laugh a lot or make people laugh. It is a, a lot. word. So it, it is. is a word. Is that like an <laughs> urban dictionary like Webster? It's, it's it's not Webster, it's CollinsDictionary.com. Okay. Okay. What's a Colin? That's a why, second tier a, dictionary. why does Colin have a dictionary? <laughs> That's a second tier. I want Miriam Webster. Maybe I'll settle for dictionary.com. I Who's Colin? And why I felt he like I felt like they were really reaching. It's like yeah. trying to like ah, oh, I like. Uh. We're so laughy. My parents did that to Natalie this weekend. I thought it was a dick move. What? We're all sitting in, in the house. Uh, you know, it's parents. It's parents. So what do you guys like about each other? <gasps> like, mom. <laughs> I find that to be. I like that we can wear each other's socks. Should yeah. Have been the first answer. Like, what are you trying? It's like <laughs> asking. Uh, she might as well a- uh, have asked Natalie to borrow her underwear. That's that intrusive of a question. You, you just meet someone and <laughs> you're, you're, you're next to their son. And you're like, so what do you like about my son? Well, that's very Personal. parental protective. Uh, but my mom didn't mean it. Like, no, my mom's of course not. Like not. That, but your mom was, like probably just met your mom. Just met heavy, her. It was like three days in. But what a, what, a, what a heavy question. What a heavy question. Don't don't do that if your parents. So what do you like about him? What makes would have been okay if she had asked that question to Natalie? I didn't like it without when your, me without the you and pre- being present. Would that it's have a been little okay? better. It's a little better, but not as okay. Unless you're on the Bachelor, of course. Talking about hometowns, meeting the parents. Yeah. What are you supposed to? What do you like about my? I don't know. He dances really well. He wears a He's, great wig. My <laughs> Natalie did not describe me as laughy though. That was. That was good. Yeah. I, I would have been like, that's all you got, huh? He watches football on a giant screen by his pool. I was These literally all great things. I was literally like, mom, <laughs> that's so rude. But also like as a parent, it's like an artist, like, you know, being like, welcome to yeah. the gallery. Please compliment my artwork, you know, because it's like, oh, it's narcissistic. Asking, yeah, my well, mom's like, not so narcissistic, but what it's like, do you like about it's like, we, uh, how did we do? Give us a review. <laughs> <laughs> He's my favorite. Is he yours? <laughs> He better be. He better be. And sure, some questions yeah. from parents. But yes, it's harder. It's protective. It's, it's harder. Intrusive. Like, imagine a hometown date 
where you 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 have a sh- a tight shot of say Serena P Serena P's mom, and then you pull back and Matt's just sitting there eating Cheetos, looking at like waiting for Serena P to answer that question. It's a lot yeah. of pressure. I agree, you should not have been present, but I think it's okay for your mother to ask that question, being protective of her favorite well, son. She, she made uh, cookies. I, my my sugar intake has risen to dangerous levels since my mom arrived. That's so nice. No, it's not. <laughs> she like you know like mom you know mom comes in and she shows Your up. Poor mom. She's making like she can't do anything right. She's making like you know all the the meals that like she wants to make the meals I liked it as a kid, which I still do. Which also by the way, mom, I know how to make these. I'm an adult. I, I've I've made them for for now. And then she comes home and brings two giant bags of red vine licorice, which I like. But once again, I am an adult. When I want licorice, I'll go buy it. Right? My mom just like brings all the sugar home as as if like mom's here. I know, I know, I know, I, I know a guy who, who has red vines. I, I know you haven't been able to find them, but I know a guy and my mom brings a bunch of sugar and I don't have the willpower to say no to it when it's in front of me. I just mean, I've been eating so much fucking sugar. Uh, it's I've, a mom thing to do. Your poor mother, <laughs> your poor mother coming, trying to nest with you, take care of her son. And you're just sitting here tearing her apart. I'm not. She's baking you cookies from scratch. You're, Enough cookies where we're having conversations about the, how wonderful they are. And you're like, sugar. Tomorrow, we're going to make drumstick tort. Which, I don't know what that means. Uh, watch the Instagram for it's What's really, a drumstick tort? Is that like chicken? Have, are you guys familiar with uh, better than sex dessert? Sim- similar? Anyway, it's really fucking good. If, are you a chocolate fan? You like chocolate? I like chocolate. Yeah. I've heard of death by chocolate it's, as a dessert. No, it's, uh, it, it's called drumstick tor- tort because it has the ingredients minus the ice cream of things that are in like a drumstick, drumstick ice cream cone. Oh, I thought I was like, what's, I was like, was it chicken tort? It's uh, <laughs> the crust is made off of uh, Nella wafers. You you ground those up, and then it's a layer of chocolate pudding, and then a layer of uh, yeah. like peanut butter. It has a little bit of I think cream cheese in it, which you know whatever you don't taste that, and then Cool Whip, and then crushed like Hershey bars, and then peanuts. Sounds <sighs> amazing. It's fucking incredible. You should hate your mom for that. I mean, listen, I'm going to eat it, but I just like it's not. I was like thinking chicken, which would have been like the beef in the thing on Friends. Oh, so you thought <laughs> drumstick. I thought you said drumstick. I heard a chicken in it. No, it's much better. Than yeah. That. Anyway, uh, shall we get to the episode? Don't forget to send in your questions at asknick at castme.com for our Ask Nick episodes. We have a fantastic episode for you tomorrow with the wonderful Maria Menounos. Uh, who is so gracious with her time and and her vulnerability talking about uh, her health struggles, uh, health struggles in her family, just overall facing adversity and still keeping going and still excelling in life, as well as just uh, a, a, a mindfulness and helping yourself and the people around you is a fantastic, fantastic episode. I'm sure you will all enjoy it. Uh, so be sure to listen to that. Other than that, uh, let's get to, to Dave, shall we? Hometowns with Dave Holmes. Oh, mm, see, see what, what you there? did there. there you <laughs> Dave, thanks so much for joining us. Nick, it's so great to see you. Uh, likewise, uh, we looking ha- fantastic. A, a branded, a branded hoodie. Yeah, I always gotta rep the merch. Yeah, rep uh, it. Uh, com in case anyone is interested. A scent diffuser. Yeah, um, oh, yeah. these are my uh, essential oil line, Dave. I can send you some. Would Nick. you Would you like to diffuse some essential oils in your home? Who are you talking to? Of course I would. <laughs> yeah, send me. Absolutely. You what know, I it? saw that guy and I was like, he's a he's an essential oil diffuser guy. As yeah. soon as I saw his face, I knew it. He, he was he was Come a big on. part of the Britney Spears yeah. documentary. Anyone? Documentary. Who, I'm a fan of Britney Spears. Days of of Britney Spears. Everyone who's a fan of Britney Spears probably wants a diffuser. I'm a, I'm assuming. I don't I don't think that's a reason. Well, that and who to wouldn't? do their own fashion shows in their house every day. Yeah. Oh man. I'll, uh, you know, so, it's it's getting harder to watch those Instagram videos yeah. after having participated in that documentary. They're not as not not as whimsical as I once. You know. No. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, a little more. Yeah. Well, even the SNL had a skit on Britney Spears over the weekend, and it was yeah. like, this is weird. I don't know. It. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. It at least the butt of the joke wasn't her. Yes. Was it the master class one again? Did they do master class again? Because the first one was a master class and it was genius. No, she, Britney Spears was interviewing Ted Cruz. Oh, shit. <laughs> it was like, I mean, it was funny. Come on and apologize. Yeah. Just, and, was, yeah, she was. And they had Britney 
Britney's character kind of be this like enlightened, like, hey, stop bullying young girls like your daughters. Yeah. It was in a play on yeah. Ted Cruz blaming his daughter. But anyway, I digress. And it was sponsored by the Notes, the Notes app. Yes. Because it was a show about apologies. So, Got yes. it. Um, so. Yeah, it, was, it was not bad. Chloe but, Feynman? Yeah. Brilliant. It's not bad. Uh, we thank you so much for, for joining us. I know you've been watching oh God, the show for, for some time. How long have you been a fan of the franchise or the show? Well, let me tell you something. I was in at the beginning. I, I think I, I checked out uh, about halfway through, and now the last couple of years I'm back. Now now it's fully captivating for me. But I will say this. This is the first season of The Bachelor that I've been into in a long time. Oh. Um, typically, I, I am a more uh, a bachelorette guy. Interesting. I like, oh. to, I like to see men in emotional distress. <laughs> like that kind of does it for me. Um, <laughs> watching young women in emotional distress feels feels can feel gross so that that is a little bit why i pulled back but like you know watching men have to be vulnerable and cry and get their hearts broken and whatever it's like it it feels right to me yeah so i'm very much it's the the fix it's the fix you need yeah (laughs) it is it's really nice yeah it uh, it gives me it gives me a nice little charge i agree with that generally and i think it's kind of same for both sexes often right like really? it, i feel more comfortable well yeah as a guy and i watch other men uh-huh. struggle with their emotions i you know and it's a show that it's you know you're inclined to maybe want to snark a little bit on, on the of cast course. i feel yes. far more comfortable snarking at my uh male peers rather than That's than absolutely. women are on the show um so I, I i think i get that and i certainly i, I we have uh, talked about how women uh, seem to be more inclined to critique uh, other women. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so I think that tracks. Yeah. 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 But this is this happens to have been a very captivating season. It has been fun. Uh, sometimes the mean girl toxicity can get draining, yes. but there seems to be, to your point, There's consequences for it. This year. Yes. The. Yeah, a, a way of that, how they're sticking up for for themselves, and, and there are consequences, and it's been uh, it's been fun to but watch. Just, yeah, just doing the basic thing of like, no, Anna, no, I I know that you're sorry that you called someone a, a prostitute walking in here, but like, okay, okay, be sorry at home, get it, go. Yeah, it, you can't just cry and hang on anymore, which is like. Like they're holding them accountable. I saw it was a TikTok or an Instagram. And it was like the difference between, you know, the women on TV versus their Instagrams. And it's true because you're, you know, you, you know, you go on their, you go on their Instagram and it's just like, I preach harmony and love and compassion uh-huh. and togetherness. <laughs> and it's the same girls were like, you fucking, you know, like, yeah. bleep and bleep and bleep and get out. And like, what the fuck are you doing here? I can't believe you showed up five minutes late. And it's, yeah. uh, it, it's yeah, been wild. It's, um- it's wild. It's really wild. How have you enjoyed um, Matt? Uh, Matt is gorgeous. <laughs> um, he's super hot. Yeah. And I don't see it. Yeah. No. He's he's next level beautiful. How do you not see um, it, Chrissy? I just I don't I'm I'm just not attracted to him. It? He's just objectively hot, whether he's your type or not. You're yeah. just like that's a good looking guy. Anyway. Yeah, okay. Okay. But anyways. Yeah. No. He, um. Beautiful <laughs> can wear the shit out of anything. Well, especially last t- night we had some we had some looks. Yeah. Some big looks. I tried. I went. Uh, I tried to wear a, a, a turtleneck last night. Oh, last night. Like, Did you? In yeah. Your I real took life. it off. I bet you could do that. In real? No, I can. I well, I have on 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 the show, and it's a very oh, popular okay. meme or gif, oh. if they say. Uh, is really? say, yeah. Yeah. But I, I think I no, I can okay, wear a yeah, turtleneck. Yeah, I like right. I like a turtleneck, but sometimes I I put the turtleneck on and I'm just like this not not today. Well, as we know from Matt, it's uh it really wears well on him. It wears well. It's it's so oh well that it's like like the way I wear T shirts. He just wears turtlenecks. Like is that's his that's his go to. A lot of information out there about how to be healthy, especially a lot of information that's outdated. Like, remember back in the day that that food pyramid thing where they told us just to eat a shit ton of carbs? Well, I, way wrong. Way wrong. Well, Noom is here, and it, it's it's uh, something I've been using for a while, uh, as well as Chrissy and just everyone in this room, because we like getting the information we need 
to help us meet our fitness goals, whatever our fitness goals might be. Uh, eating right, getting uh, more energy from physical exercise, whether maybe we want to gain weight, maybe we want to gain muscle mass, maybe we want to lose weight. Noom is there to give us, again, that information we want to help us teach us about some good habits we have to meet those goals that we want to meet. Based in psychology, Noom teaches you how to eat uh, so you can accomplish, again, those personal health goals and stick with them long term. Because you don't need rules to meet your fitness uh, goals, you just need knowledge. With Noom, you pick the health goals that are right for you, and Noom personalizes a, a, a program to help your aspirations become a reality. Eating better to feeling better, understanding cravings, knowing how to shop, knowing uh, no food is bad. Noom's cognitive behavioral approach means that you're not uh, just meeting your goals, you're understanding the habits to help you get there. Everyone is busy. That's why Noom doesn't demand much of your time. It only takes 10 minutes a day. Over 80% of Noom have finished the program and over 60% have stuck with their goals for the last year. There's a science to getting healthier. It's called Noom. Sign up today for your uh, Noom for trial. That's N-O-O-M dot com slash B-I-A-L-L. Learn how to eat again with Noom. Sign up today for your trial at Noom, N-O-O-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Ready to learn how to live healthier? Sign up for Noom today at N-O-O-M dot com slash V-I-A-L-L. Fig legs. Like I said, I like wearing figs because I go to the grocery store and people look at me like I'm a doctor and immediately I feel like I'm respected for the first time in my life. They're also super comfortable and fashionable. Uh, oh now, Natalie, Natalie uh, can't get enough of them. Uh, she steals my figs. And uh, the basically, uh, figs has brought scrubs to the 21st century by creating scrubs with a focus of design, function, and comfort. The thing I can confirm is it's ridiculously soft, comfortable, and fashionable, plus a lot of pockets. Some styles include over 10 pockets. Who needs that many pockets? You do when you have a lot of things that you're carrying around because you're a doctor saving lives and yeah. stuff. So uh, thank the medical healthcare professionals in your life by getting them some scrubs or just, you know, look like a doctor and uh, be comfortable if, uh, if you're like me. If you're one of the awesome humans who work in healthcare, Figs wants you to wear the scrubs you deserve and enjoy 15% off your first order. And if you're not working in, on the front lines, thank someone with a pair of scrubs in, in, in uh, the world. With uh, 15% off, too. You know, we'll help you uh, be a, uh, a good gift giver. Use code VIALL15 at checkout. Head to wearfigs.com. That's W E A R F I G S dot com and enter my code, VIAL15. That's V I A L L 1 5 at checkout. Get ready to love your screws. I think there is a visible lack of seasoning. You know what I mean? Like it's typically when someone is uh, anchoring their own season, they've already been a contestant on someone else's and they've seen what they did. They've lived the experience. They have seen the way the edit works and, and they fine tuned it a little bit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, you really get the sense that he is brand new to the experience. Uh, that's a great um, point. Um, that's seasoning. I like how you, you said yeah. that. Yeah, no, it, it is. You can see him, um, yeah, struggling with that as he goes. You can almost, and you also can see, you know, like with Heather showing up, right? Like you can see probably f f the producers taking advantage of uh, the innocence, I guess you can say, that he yeah. has about the show. You're going to get more mm -hmm. surprises from him. Right. Um, you're going to, you're, you're going to get more reactions from him. You can see him trying to figure out what he, is doing and what he has to say and uh but i i also kind of see it through the lens of like matt even said like he's he's not that experienced with relationships and yeah. i think almost to that point as well you're seeing a, a lack of seasoning on matt's part uh, in terms yeah. of of you know what what's right for him or him figuring out the, the um you know, it seems like, you know, Rachel has been his front runner of these other women, but he seems to even sure. be struggling with what he likes or who really he he is into. And, you know, now you've had fast forwarding a little bit. We'll get into the, talking about that with Serena being the second woman who's left on her own. And I sometimes wonder you saw that a lot with Colton, another person who was very open about his lack of of relationship experience. And I wonder as you know. Uh, and Colton had a handful of women leave on their own. I wonder if the women, as these seasons progress and we start getting into like hometowns and talking about engagement, uh, some of these women who are sensing from the 
you know, these guys who don't have a lot of experience is like, I, I don't know if I could picture myself, you know, with this guy. And I, I wonder sometimes if, if, if they can kind of sense that energy or the lack of experience from the person who's the bachelor. I don't know. Maybe not. But, it, yeah. it, you know, it's, it's happened twice with Matt. It happened a few times yeah. with Colton. Yeah. So everybody everybody's doing it for the first time, which is which is a rare thing in in, you know, mid to late bachelor history to have somebody just brand new and then all the contestants except for heather are brand new um okay so i and i'm sure you've answered this question ten thousand times and i'm sorry but i can't i have to okay (laughs) shoot we do have to get to the essential like bachelor bachelorette conundrum which is at this time in the process are you actually feeling the feelings that you're saying that you're feeling this is, is it, this is a great question. Okay. It's an excellent question. Uh, okay. and I was think I always I think about this every season as I watch and and and, and I'm guessing you probably watched you asked this question because in this episode it was like the every conversation was about saying I love you or falling in love. Yes. I always get a kick out of the the spectrum of love that always ends up on the bachelor. Like I'm yeah. falling, I'm falling. It's just like you could literally say it to everyone. <laughs> you know, Matt says that to to Bree's mom. She's like, hmm. You get different reactions of what people interpret yeah. falling in love, and how is it just a coincidence that everyone on the same like time period is is ready to just affirm their feelings for a person? And it yeah. happens every season. It's a little bit of both, uh, I think, because there, there's people okay. who really do feel it. Other people are struggling. As I mentioned in our last episode, you look at someone like Serena. Um, the they they notice their peers, right? And 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 then yeah. this these seasons where they're still together, um, they haven't really separated. They're they're like fuck it, we're just gonna keep everyone in the same room. Other seasons, right. this would be where everyone kind of separates and they can focus on their relationship, and, and that's not uh-huh. happening. So now you're 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 evaluating your feelings for the person, the the lead. And then you're all, but it's harder to do when you see everyone else talking and expressing, or even sometimes you're just observing them, like, you know, looking like they're in love and that you start questioning your feelings. And, and it's not even questioning your feelings. You're questioning, like you're, you're, you're questioning yourself. Well, why am I in my head? Am I just not, you know, and you've seen this from, from Serena P when you're in your head and you're questioning a relationship, especially if the person that, you know, you're dating is a, an attractive person, nice person, as they say, has all these, they check the boxes as they say, then you start judging yourself. You're like, well, why do I have my walls up? You know, why do I, maybe you just don't like them, but you start questioning yeah. yourself being like, well, maybe it's me. Maybe there's a problem with me. Who wouldn't like this person? I must be crazy. And so you start convincing yourself, like maybe, you know, it's a real tough, this is a really kind of, difficult position for the cast people to be in because they're they went from three weeks ago to being like this is a nice person he seems nice i guess i can see it but like there's no way i'm going to be falling in love by the end of this to fast forward four weeks they're like fuck i mean i don't know maybe fuck it other people are just like you know so it's a there's a whole spectrum of people and depending on who they are and there's like an expectation yeah and yeah yeah Nick, what you're describing is brainwashing. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's the Stanford Prison Experiment, Dave. It is, yeah. It's well, it's religion. Well, part of it, yeah, and a part of it is brainwashing ourselves. It's uh, controlled yeah. environments, expectations, the fear of disappointment, all these uh, disappointing yourself, and, disappointing your peers, and probably uh, sleep deprivation a little bit, right? A little bit, Maybe? yeah. But okay. more that that's more uh, booze. That, that's more uh, that's more, uh, that's more uh, just trying to film a TV show rather than like okay. deliberate. You can't sleep. There's also a okay, lot yeah, of napping, true. lots of napping. Okay. Uh, in the in the house during the day. Okay, that yeah. probably doesn't make the final cut. That's not yeah. going television. Well, unless you're on, unless my up. season, unless it, unless you're Corinne. Okay. <laughs> oh right, right, right. Yeah. Corinne, I forgot about Corinne. Um, also, um, a lot of booze. So you're, you know, you're tipsy or you're a little hungover. Yeah. And, and remorseful. Some people. What you said and did on camera. Some people, yeah. Okay, so that can that can weaken the the will a little bit. Okay. Yeah, okay. but you I'm are just, just emotion. You're emotionally taxed. You're just even if right. you're, yeah, your your sleep schedule's off. You you mm-hmm. you. Everyone kind of goes in every season 
you know, especially the guys they are always like, it's always yeah. the fitness, you know, everyone's there like the first week in the bachelor mansion. Everyone's just like working out. Hey, do you want to work out? Hey, let's all work out. Like, let's just all get <laughs> puff. But like by this time, everyone's like, fuck it. I don't care. You know, you're just, <laughs> yeah. you're just emotionally tired. And like, you can kind of tell even on this season, you know, there's still beautiful women, but like they look, they look tired. They don't, they're not glowing off the camera. Like they were week one and two. They're all just a little okay. like, eh, I'm just, let Let's just get it. to the end, man. Doesn't it just feel like everyone's losing their mind these days? Yes. Yes, it does. 100% yes. So it does feel that way. I'm confident in saying this ad is for you. Whoever you Thank are, you. you are all going nuts, including myself. Well, BetterHelp, you know, I'm going to invest in BetterHelp because I feel like the way the world is so nutty, they're doing great things. BetterHelp uh, is uh, here to help us connect us with some mental health experts. And by some, I mean some great ones to help us with our crises, our, our stresses, whatever we're dealing with. Anxiety, stress, work-related issues, trolls, um, job. You know, I constantly tell Allie she's going to be fired and it freaks her out. Fun for me sucks for Allie. So that's why she probably could use uh, BetterHelp. BetterHelp is here for you. Uh, BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit their website and read their testimonials that are posted daily. Visit BetterHelp, that's uh, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P, and join over the 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. You take a quick quiz, by the way. Uh, they assign you with a, a mental health professional. Uh, it's super convenient. It's super easy. You don't have to do it. Uh, you can do it from your home. You don't have to leave. If you don't like who they assign you with, no problem. Just get someone that's more, uh, that's something that you're more comfortable with. So many people have been using BetterHelp that they are recruiting additional counselors in all 50 states. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, and Vile File listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash Vile Files. That's V-I-A-L-F-I-L-E-S. <laughs> Headspace, I'll tell you what, uh, focusing on my breathing, relaxing uh, mentally, just being present and checking out has really helped me with my mindfulness, my mental health, my state of mind. Headspace has helped me do it through their daily doses of mindfulness in the form of guided meditation in an easy-to-use app. Headspace is the only meditation app advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research. So whatever the situation, Headspace really can help you feel better. Overwhelmed? I know I am. Headspace has over three-minute SOS meditations for you. Headspace is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, uh, over 600,000 five-star reviews, and over 60 million downloads. So, hey, you don't have to take my word for it. Headspace makes it easy, easy for you to build a life-changing meditation practice with mindfulness that works for you on your schedule anytime, any. Where you deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash V I A L L. That is headspace.com slash V I A L L for a free one month trial with access to Headspace's full library of meditation for every situation. Let me just tell you this <laughs> the um, uh, Ben Smith from the last season yes. of The Bachelorette, yeah. mm -hmm. uh, his Instagram feed, yes, is just him. It's one of two things. Doing heavy squats, yes, or uh, saying "I love you" yes. to the person watching. Yes. Also, now there's a puppy involved, so there's a third thing. <laughs> it's the best. It's the best show on television. It's quality content <laughs> it's my binge for watch. sure. It's, I can't, I'm obsessed I can't with stop. it. I, I mean, stop. I follow the guy. I don't know if I'm I watch him closely as you two. I'm with Dave. I'm obsessed yeah. with it. I don't care if it's, it's in a purple colored lighting or like sometimes oh, a pink care. lighting. He whatever also, lighting he's he doing, he does these like very confidently under the chin selfie videos yes. it, that angle works for it me. works How for him i don't like i don't for anyone else yeah. but ben he's like yeah you guys don't have the jawline like i have so you can't do this but i'm going to yeah How does, if i did that i'd look if i did that i'd look like ricky gervais's instagram feed <laughs> <laughs> it's completely insane and i truly can't stop okay he has he has like the bodybuilding club right mm -hmm. and there was like a nutrition club and i was like you know what new year i'm gonna join this nutrition club i'm gonna you know i'm gonna get the secret to looking like ben smith and it was like 99 bucks and uh and i signed up and they sent an email and, and the email was like uh vegetables and that was it that was it it was 99 bucks to get like um you, you should know, eat vegetables celery and stay away from sugar yeah. yeah don't eat sugar like okay i knew that i kind of knew that like in my head i knew that and i and i have 99 fewer dollars now so great great thanks thanks ben Smith. 
But he's I, putting I out. You really there's, there's paid for the content. Coming, but. Think of it this way: you paid ninety nine dollars towards the co- the amazing content that keeps you going. Which he has been generous enough to give for free. You're absolutely yes, right. Yeah. There you go. It's it, we can call it. Where yeah. would, where would you be without that? <laughs> No, he mm-hmm. wouldn't. You wouldn't know what a carrot was. Uh, yeah, That's totally. Cool. Um, you know, eat the the you know protein the size of your fist. Okay, I I literally could have. No, I, I was the laugh I knew this one. I've been trying to I've been trying to get Ben to come over to 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 work out, but he's a busy guy, and uh, we we're we're trying to make it happen. I have an outdoor gym, and I want to. Okay. Ah. Oh, yeah. Great. Well, you have my number now, so let's let's. Make yeah, it let's we'll, we'll make it happen. He's like, but no, seriously, like I need to be fed. Like he's my hero, and get a <laughs> refund. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> I need something. For no, no, no I love head. you, but also I love you, but also. I could have read that at the grocery store vegetables. in the vegetable section. But yeah, also give me like 40 of my dollars back. Yeah. I have govern that. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, hometowns. Here hometowns, we are. Here we go. Um, hometowns. Do you have, uh, of the four women, Michelle, we got Michelle, we got Brie, we got Serena, and we got Rachel. Who have you mm-hmm. been enjoying this season and why? Well, I'll tell you, um, this has been um, – Okay, one thing that happens typically with this show is that once you get to the hometowns, um, it is the four people who have kind of played the game the best, but that also means that they have flown a little bit under the radar, right? So their their airtime has been nice dates with him, Yep. which is good for them, but it's also when I tend to look at my phone, right? Yes. So... So you end up with the, when I like at the end of last episode when it was like, oh, these are the four women. I was like, these are also the four women I remember the least. That's um, an interesting. That, I, that's often true. Yeah. When you look up. You're yeah. just like, I, have never, I, I watch it the same way. I mm-hmm. I have I have to force myself to go back and rewatch many of the one on one dates mm-hmm. uh, to talk about it. But I often check out because it's a lot of the same beats and the same notes sure. early on of like. There's a story involved and there's some mm-hmm. like, why are we compatible and why do I relate to you? Uh, mm-hmm. It's usually not always, but often is the case. Uh, sometimes right. you get some people who are both compelling and play into either the drama, whether they're a part of the drama or they are at least having a take on the drama. Yeah. But most often the case, at least two or the three front runners are people, as you say, glide right they, they glide right. through they are good looking likable mm-hmm. and quiet and avoid yeah. the drama right. yeah. and avoid the drama yeah yeah so yeah so everyone was um was great i um i have a, a faint memory of serena p doing like the sex yoga and being like i don't i was not happy doing the sex that yoga. was last week dave that yeah. was last week, <laughs> yeah. okay. so um so that's that I like. I like when somebody can just say like that was weird and I wish we hadn't done it. That that takes some gumption. It, so yes, like it it does. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, and then yeah, I mean I like I like Brie. I like Brie a lot. Um, and I like although again I, I felt like oh here's Michelle who we're meeting for the first time tonight. Um, but I but I enjoyed her. Rachel I keep hearing is is the front runner and she's. Uh, and she's very pretty and everything, but I, I, and they seem to get along, but I, I can't, I can't say that she's my favorite. Yeah. She's not my favorite. No, I get it. But she appears to be the favorite. Yeah. And it, it appears. And again, this is only based off of what we see. And I say it snarkingly, but also I understand because I've been there is Matt's the most physically attracted to her. And in that world, right. looks matter a ton because you have very little to go on what he, Mm-hmm. He doesn't he is he is he he is very sure how he feels about these women physically because he has eyes and and for him they work <laughs> and that's great. But like all the other stuff that he went in conversation he's like I, I think we have a lot in common. I guess there's a, a story uh we've we've spent you know 146 minutes together. So <laughs> I'm just going to trust my gut on this, but I see yeah. My eyes tell me I'm very physically attracted. There's a very physical chemistry. And, and for, yeah. it seems like for Rachel, that's the driving factor based, uh, yeah. based yeah, off there, the conversations. There's an ease there. and a yeah. comfort and an obvious attraction. And she is, she is gorgeous. Yeah. Um, yeah. And they look, they look great together. But yeah, but I can't say, like, I, I, don't, I don't have a, a read on her personality. I don't 
Oh, the, uh, Brie in the intro says something really interesting um, that I'm curious about with you as well. Um, she's like, Brie, it was like, I feel the most myself around my family. And I was like, oh, I don't. I mean, I love my family, but like, I don't think I feel the most myself around them. And I don't, I don't know if that, is that, does that resonate with you at all? Yeah. No, I, uh, I, okay. well, for me, cause I have a lot of siblings. I love all my siblings equally. There's a love, yeah. there's a true love. There's a loyalty. I definitely don't like them equally. <laughs> right. <laughs> like I don't, I don't like spending time with some of them, you know, yeah. like it's hard. Like I love them cause we're related in blood, but like having a whole meal of food with him, like, yeah. and just being forced to talk would be a very challenging experience. I think for both of us for, you know, in some relationships. And so yeah. I, and, and how can you possibly be yourself in, in that environment? Um, but also with family, because you love them, I don't give a shit. So I am myself regardless of okay. what they might think. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. But makes I, sense. I don't necessarily don't, they don't, um, bring out my, yeah, they don't necessarily, not all of them bring out the best in me to there your you point. Go. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yeah. but, but I think for Same. some people they, it, it is the case, but and I, that's great. I'm thrilled. I, it, it, but that, it, it, I hear it. And I'm like, wow. Okay. Good for you. <laughs> but I think to your point, there's probably a few lies in the seasons we've seen because everyone who goes on the show for not everyone, most people, unless it's a dramatic story are all like, love my family. I don't know what I'd do without my family. My family is my well, rock yeah. and my yeah. foundation. Yeah, Dean was really like the first one that was like my family's like yeah I yeah Dean on on Rachel season was kind of like eh you know I could do without him yeah you know it's my friends for me (laughs) like the first one take him or leave him Michelle's hometown uh I Mm -hmm. I like uh I like how the the show is adjusting the new normal uh bringing the families in and trying to make it seem a little bit like a hometown uh what seems so simple I was like oh what a great idea to have her class zoom in like yeah. a zoom class you're getting mm-hmm. a little bit of like the real world the present real world experience and what teachers are having to do uh, mm-hmm. or had to do while while teaching through zoom classes i thought it was really cute i so actually cute. i actually i was quite moved uh by uh the it was uh, you know you have all these like playful fun question you know matt has this classic like awkward laugh you know when matt's really uncomfortable he just kind of has this big joyful laugh but the but the student at the end who shared the note that michelle wrote her uh mm. about like hey you got a big test today i believe in you i i was <laughs> i got a little yeah. choked up i was yeah. like same michelle yeah, is so an cute. absolute rock star what a gem i don't think i've She's ever great. got a note from a teacher telling me they believed in me and i just think to myself how how powerful that is for a teacher to do to a a young student to just say, I believe in you, yeah. that student will remember that forever. Can I tell you a story? I, um, so I, when I was in, um, I didn't wait for a yes, I just started telling you. No, it story. was, yeah. Um, <laughs> so when, when I was in fourth grade, I wrote like uh, a short story um, for, I, I don't even know if it was an assignment or if I just wanted to or whatever. And, uh, and I gave it to my teacher, Mrs. Mannion, and, uh, and she read it and, uh, and I got like, whatever, a good a star or whatever. But she said, um, you have a talent for this, and I expect to uh, to see your name in the New Yorker someday. And I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Like, in my, I, like, I wasn't a particularly good student in any other way. I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't, like, I didn't really have an identity in, when it mm-hmm. came to school. But in that moment, I was like, whether she meant it or not, this woman has indicated that she sees that I am a writer. And so, like, that, as of you know, done all kinds of crazy things in my career, that has always been a North star for me, right? Yeah. So, oh yeah. So, and then, you know, 10 or so years ago, my focus did shift to writing. And then, you know, five years ago, I I got my book published and, and I, and I, um, one of my, when I was doing my little tour, I stopped in St. Louis where I grew up and I invited her and she came and, and it was like, it, it truly was, she didn't remember having written it, but I never forgot. And it's like it's that that kind of thing is really important. Yeah. So if you're a teacher out there, just that's a, take that's the a, 15 seconds to write something because it will affect it. That's a great story. It, it endeared me to Michelle even more. She's always been yeah. someone I've, I've really enjoyed uh, watching. Mm-hmm. And, and it's also really kind of pissed me off that she 
quote unquote showed up late because yeah. clearly they just for a TV purpose held on like, you know, all the yeah. women who showed up late other than Heather were there the whole time. I mean, they were always, I'm yeah. assuming, going to show up late. It they talked about that with her parents, didn't they? Yeah, she mentioned, you know, yeah, she just mentioned like she I was, was a late there. arrival, yeah. so to speak. You and know? I was yeah. here the whole time. So, so, yeah, so they just had her in a different area of the chateau. Yeah, I mean, it's fine. I mean, <laughs> on some benefit, like, hey, that's that's a win. As someone who has showed up late to a season, you, you uh, get to skip all the stupid group dates that have nothing to do with getting to know the person you want to get to know. <laughs> And it, it, it had no value and it's actually torturous. But and Michelle was fast tracked, so to speak, because she showed up the next day. She gets a one on one and all of a sudden she's kind of had ahead of emotionally than many of the other women yeah. who had to, you know, box or paintball or whatever the, the shit right. they had to do. They're just like, I don't know. Why right. am I here? You know, yeah. <laughs> like uh, but uh, yeah, it, she she tested out. It was like advanced placement. Yeah, it, it, tr <laughs> it truly was. Got to write in. Um, junior level. Can we talk about the matching cornflower outfits? We can, which I was surprised because they know that, that that's not an accident, I guess is what I'm saying. I also love that yeah. you both know cornflower. <laughs> I love that you both know Well, that. I didn't know it was called cornflower, <laughs> but I knew it was matching. I, but you, when I said it, you knew what I meant. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah, it's that was definitely a choice because there is a wardrobe department that looks at these people before they get out on camera. Well, uh, well, Perfect. Matt has his stylist, right? And they've okay. kind of pre-selected pieces throughout the season before the season starts. But things like before these types of dates, especially one-on-one -on -one dates or hometowns, there's a little like, what is our lady wearing today kind of thing. And since the lead has an abundant choices of options, they try to... Well, they just ask. Now, I don't know what they're... Maybe they are trying to match. Now, personally, I fucking you, love... You love matching. Dressing up the <laughs> same way that my girlfriend does. I think it's funny. I think really? it's hysterical. Lately, because we recently just kind of told people... Well, first, we got outed in terms of our relationship. Then we were like, fuck it. Yeah, we're dating. And since then... uh like paparazzi. paparazzi decided to show up outside <laughs> oh, of my house, house and there's some cool photos of me taking out the garbage so and on a walk so that's cool uh, and then it was like fuck it and since then uh there's just places uh, you know like uh, if you go to jones there's a pop you know like we'll uh, we'll deliberately dress up and, and have matching shoes and and it's fun i think it's funny you go to jones yeah jones on third or yeah. jones by the formosa uh, I go to well both Jones on actual third, uh, but though right. I I I live closer. But then to the there's one J O N E S, the restaurant, which is probably close because there's no outdoor space there. Yeah, Jones on third. Jones on third. Jones on third. Yeah. Um, B L T. I Avocado, think it's yes. Fantastic. Yeah, I think it's hysterical <laughs> to dress up like I want like when you're doing chores to be so outrageous because people. <laughs> think that i don't know what they think maybe maybe she made me dress up like her or i you know vice versa i think it's hysterical but well that okay it is sort of cute for you because you are heterosexual i have a boyfriend who has pretty much the exact same taste so nine times out of ten when we go out if in the times when we could go out uh we will stop steps before the front door and look at each other and go god damn it every like, day the same yeah. Not every day, yeah. but like sometimes we're like going out to meet friends and it's like we cannot dress the same. I, I, see, no. I, I see how that's a problem. I do it ironically for yeah. for attention. Uh, <laughs> for us, it's just like we're becoming the same person and it makes me makes me crazy. Yeah, no, I can get that. So um, somebody has to go and change. So but to your point, they did this and I was I thought about I, I, I spent a good five minutes thinking about this while watching it. It was like, why? Mm -hmm. Is it because they look cute together? There, there was a conscious choice. It wasn't an accident. Like they, mm -hmm. I don't. Maybe they just kind of mail it in. But they always ask, like, "What is our lady wearing today?" Uh, and then Matt or the whatever lead will will kind of decide. So they're like, right. "Hey, she's wearing this," and maybe they're like, "I have. We have literally, what's it called again? The color, Dave? Cornflower. cornflower. We uh, we also have a cornflowered <laughs> shirt. Let's let's go get." Let's go get look cute together. Maybe that must have Let's been the choice. That, that must have it must have been an active choice. It worked. It worked. Um, I I also was. Um, it's it's a really interesting thing because these were these were let's say eight year olds, right? Yeah, eight ish. 
So they're asking questions that I think they really wanted to know the answer to that are legitimately confusing. Like a young lady named Leona asked, is that your boyfriend? Yeah. Right? Because kids just kind of want to understand. Yes. Like, oh, you're holding hands with a boy. Is that your boyfriend? The idea of this show and like a person dating 48 women or whatever it was <laughs> this season, right, is is a pretty sophisticated concept for a child. And I'm just wondering how much of it they were told, how much they they took in. That's a great If they're even going to know what Fantasy Suites is and what that entails. <laughs> um it just seems like a very grown up conversation. And we're, we're, we talk so much in our culture about like, what are we gonna tell the kids? And it's like, this is a real one where it's like, what are we gonna tell the kids? But the questions what were like- What is this show to a child? The kids, yeah, the kids' questions were generally like what you would ask like your, like if they were at home and like with their families, like, oh, are you gonna kiss her? Are you gonna do this? Yeah, yeah but there but were like some very specific bachelor questions that yeah, might've yeah, been yeah. like, hey, maybe you, maybe ask this. And that's a oh, good point. They were, they were definitely scripted, but I think they also yeah. were like curious about that. Well, you, yeah, that's an interesting point. They were probably like, hey, maybe ask this. And the kid's probably like, what the fuck am yeah, I like, asking, are you gonna man? Get, like, what do you mean how many girlfriends? Rose. My parents told yeah. me you're not like, what? <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. The, it's, they're they're going to get a quick education. Yeah. Uh, unbeknownst um, to the producers, they maybe created some like preemptive fuck boys down there we're like they i don't know oh someone God. someone told me like how many girlfriends <laughs> i must be able to have a lot at the same time no, no problem yeah. and yeah. uh unfortunately yeah. So now billy on the playground's going with like six girls i have seven <laughs> girlfriends it's fine i can my, fit four on the tire swing yeah. at once <laughs> matt did it why can't i there was a young uh, gentleman named tyler who seemed very poised i was like okay i, I like this kid he put, you know, he took a moment before he asked his question. At the end, when uh, when Michelle was like, "What do we, what do we think of Matt?" Everyone, you know, gave a thumbs up or whatever. He like he held back for a minute and considered it, <laughs> and then eventually gave a thumbs up. I, I appreciate the poise of a young Tyler. Matt, uh, Matt did something I really appreciated, which I think is funny, and I don't know if it comes from I don't know Matt's um, how many like kids he's been around uh, mm -hmm. growing up. You know, like, does he have a lot of nieces and nephews or friends who have a lot of babies? And, and Matt kind of reads as someone who hasn't been around a ton because I always wow. love it when adults like give very adult answers to kids. And Matt did mm -hmm. that a couple times when he was laughing and cute. But like when it came to bachelor questions, because he didn't want to give anything away, it was like how, I think it was when he asked if you were in love uh, with Michelle or how many kids. And he gave a very a very earnest, very direct, like adult like answer to a bunch of kids it was like, well, we'll see where it goes. And mm -hmm. it was just like the way he said it. I kind of chuckled. I don't know if anyone else picked that up, but I thought it was kind of yeah. funny. I think it's always yeah. funny when you talk to children like adults. Yeah. Um, and then expect him to like get on your level. It's it's kind of hilarious. Yeah. But there is also no like child way no to express what's going yeah. on. Yeah. It's like uh, you know what I mean? You know, well today, but like tomorrow I am having a date with another woman. Right. We'll see where right. that goes. Yeah. Um but your teacher's it's up a lot there. For a kid. Yeah. Um yeah. but all in all, really cute. I, I liked it. Did it it mm -hmm. was an enjoyable moment. Uh I, mm -hmm. I liked it. Then we get to meet Michelle's parents. They seem lovely. I'm a lovely huge fan of Michelle's dad. I feel like Michelle's dad is someone uh, I, I I feel like he's a really good storyteller. I don't know why. Yes. I feel like he has a lot of stories. Yeah. And if I got to meet Michelle's dad, he exudes we'd, wisdom. We'd, we'd crack a beer yes. and he'd yeah. be like, let me tell you a story. I'd be like, great. <laughs> and like four hours later, I'd just be like, you know, with my hands up like this. And he would just, Absolutely. I just, I'm certain that yeah. Michelle's dad's a good storyteller. I don't know. Yeah. 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 I, I took to him immediately. Emotionally um, open. Yeah. Emotionally um, open. When, when all the uh, when they all hugged each other, I, I felt I felt a pang of of jealousy. You know what I mean? Your folks are in town. They've had it. Yeah. Right. Can, are you hugging? Can you? What, what's your distance policy? Well, uh, my parents uh, recently had the had the corona right. a couple months ago. Uh, I I'm pretty sure I had it early on. I have no idea. So yeah, I'm hugging the okay. parents. I'm hugging the okay. parents. Um, okay. Uh, but yeah, there's some there's some hugging, and yeah, they seem <laughs> like they're in love, the family with each other, Michelle's family, yeah. really really great yeah. family. Um, interesting, 
I don't know if you picked up on this. I know we've had these 101s, but it seems like, ironically, it's like fast forward, Rachel being the front runner. Rachel hasn't been in love, uh, according to her, has very limited dating experience her, herself. And this, this episode, we've been, without a lot of detail, Michelle, Brie, and Serena all seem to have really hard heartbreaks. All of them were just like, yes. that shit happened to me. Yeah. I don't know if I can do this. And sure as shit, if this season plays out the way it's showing us, Matt's going to pick the only girl who has no experience when it comes to being in love or relationships. And that, that's mm -hmm. fine. That happens. You got a lot. But like there is something to be said about uh, I feel way more comfortable with people that have f felt heartbreak before. Absolutely. Um, to me, it's a very scary feeling to be like, yeah, you don't you you don't. It's all new to you, huh? This whole like not getting what you wanted, being disappointed and 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 oh, yeah. and, uh, and, and 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 yeah. really and really valuing what you have in a way that's beyond this all feels great in the honeymoon phase. And that's just, and, and Rachel hasn't by her own admission. And yet these other right. three women, regardless of their age, has you the way they talked without the detail that was all like their families knew about it. They, they, they all kind of went through something with their daughters mm -hmm. and these experience and they, they oh, probably they, they learned the storm together. Yeah. And every single one of them, but Rachel <laughs> and uh, yeah. uh, we, we didn't get a ton of detail though. I was a bum to see, to hear not get those details, but they, they all, the way they all talked about it, starting with Michelle is that they all felt some real pain and it was a moment in their lives that, mm -hmm. um, that made them who they are today. Like they, you could tell there were some real character moments for them in these, in these moments of heartbreak. Yeah. So will Matt be Rachel's first major heartbreak? I mean, it could, you know, maybe, maybe they'll, maybe she will win and maybe they will get married and so sad. It, it'll be Trista and Ryan all over again. Maybe. Yeah. Or, <laughs> well, or maybe not. Or, or, or maybe not. Or Michelle maybe. and Matt will be Tristan and Ryan all over again. It, uh, well, yeah, I mean, if I, I and I apologize to Matt up front, because as someone who's been in Matt's shoes, there's nothing that, it, that frustrated me more than people telling me who they think I should pick for myself. You know, it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, tell me more about me. Like, you know, it's a TV <laughs> show. You're watching TV, but we'll play the game. Yeah, it seems like Matt and Rachel. Um, I'm sorry, Matt, Matt and Michelle, like if those if they ended up together, have the best chance of making this work like it just it. <laughs> They th like the way I think Michelle commands a certain respect from Matt that I don't know if the other women are able to get and a from. maturity. Yeah. yeah, 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 I agree. There's just like I, a, I, I think it's a good pairing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. But uh, and, 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 and Michelle is very into Matt and uh, oh, I'm already fe I'm feeling the heartbreak already. I it's, can't. Uh, <sighs> uh, Good TV though, and she's gorgeous. They're yeah. all gorgeous. They're all wonderful. Can... They're all wonderful. Yeah. Uh, second hometown, uh, Brie, right? Is it Brie? Mm -hmm. No, was Rachel. It, was it Rachel? Yeah, Rachel. It was Rachel. Rachel showing up in uh, the Dick the... Dastardly and Muttley's car from the Laugh Olympics. I'm, I'm, <laughs> eight, I'm dating myself with that reference, but it's fully a cartoon villain car. Yeah, yeah, totally. I guess, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. and I, apparently uh, Pennsylvania, there's a there must be some sort of Vintage well, car lot well, outside well, they, Nebby Cola. They, 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 I mean, they <laughs> literally had a date there. Where, did, yeah. who'd Matt, did Matt have a date with? Was that who did he have his one? He had his one on one dinner portion. Uh, was it Rachel? It was literally in a, like an uh, antique, antique car museum. The dinner uh -huh. portion uh -huh. I don't remember from this season, was. right? That's, so they're they're pulling you, cars. Is, yeah. Even hearing you say that, I just want to start playing words with friends on my phone. Oh, so yeah. that probably happened, and I and I missed it. Yes, so while watching it. Um. <laughs> so they're they're clearly <laughs> utilizing those cars. So, uh. I thought about this too because Rachel takes Matt skydiving. To me, this felt like uh, uh, you're his front runner. Uh, the producer's throwing her a bone because clearly, Rachel, while game for skydiving, it wasn't like I'm a big fucking sky. Like, because Calm Towns is usually about what you love, what you're into, something yeah. about like brings yeah. you home. And she's like, she's We're going no skydiving. Interest. Have they you done know? skydiving yeah. before? 
They've done like jump bungee jumping. I don't know if they have. I don't think they've done. Sky- I mean, the insurance on that must have been insane. They, well, I, <laughs> this is no, like a production place. standpoint. I was watching it like as a like, production. What a bummer like, for that guy. skydiving company to yeah. like be like have Rachel fall on her face. <laughs> oh my god. I, and by the way, I mean, they only showed him for a few frames, but the guy who was attached to her back was an, a, like a giant child, like a, an adult baby. Yeah. I don't know if you saw his face, but he was fully like a, a stretched out oh seven year old. I, I skydove once. It's a great experience. I recommend it to everyone. However, uh, it, again, who knows? But my, my experience, my one time, they the all the all the guys you're strapped to they all are yeah. ad- adult children like it's oh, it's 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 a different breed of person and i love it, it when they they're like unique. who's ready to go to 12,000 feet yeah like yeah. that's the type of person who's like you know you hire to go yeah. skydiving like these adrenaline absolutely. junkies who are well, like Matt's, a, Matt's like an adrenaline guy right yeah like well a, that's my yeah. that was t- to my point is like this was this was a bone I, I feel like thrown by producers being like, Hey, there's this skydiving company. This is available. They're in the area. We can do this. Who should we have do it to? And they probably like, Hey, Rachel, what do you think uh, about this? Cause all of these hometown dates, especially now because they can't go to their hometowns. There's a lot of conversations around what would you do in your hometown? What can we do here? You know, like we saw it a lot on, on Tasha season where like, you know, Zach did the whole like, you know, fake tour around New York and, and yeah, yeah. But like with Rachel, it's like we're going skydiving and it wasn't like Rachel's like, I'm super into this, something that would surprise most people about me. I'm an adrenaline junkie. We're going yeah. skydiving. But because Matt is a, an adrenaline yeah. junkie, clearly he's going to be excited about this. He he was going to be all into this. This was very yeah. exciting to him. And she's <laughs> just like, yeah, I mean, we can do it. Yeah, hey, um, from the in the town I'm from, we have the sky. So yeah. let's uh, let's, <laughs> let's dive. Get up in it. In a, we have altitude. Yeah, let's <laughs> jump out of a plane. I, she did say, um, "If I die, I'm glad I'm dying with you," which is that's yeah, that's a that's a lot to put on someone. Yeah, I also don't believe that it. Is, that is that is a quote from someone who's never had their heart broken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it really, it really, it really is. It really is. Yeah. Because anyone yeah. else has had their heart broken, they're like, no, you're not worth it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then she is uh, literally uh, slammed into the earth. <laughs> I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was totally Rachel's fault. Because she put her feet okay. back instead of feet out. Talk to me. When you skydive, yeah. you, you yes. saw Matt's. You saw how Matt yeah. fell. They tell you to sit in an L. Yeah. Right. Yes. And they yes. do that because you got you got four feet, you got four yeah. legs coming down, right. and the two legs in front don't know what they're doing. Right. And you're just supposed to like sit. You're supposed to just glide and land on your butt. It. But people's instincts are to put their feet down. Yeah. So basically, what Rachel did in the last second yeah. is she put her feet down, and it's the equivalent of like someone you know, riding a bike and putting a broomstick in your front wheel because like her, yes. her, her foot, her leg hit the ground and you had momentum and that made her fall right on her face. Had she sat yes. up on her butt, they would have landed just like yeah. Matt did not to put okay. like, but in, you know, in fairness, it wasn't the skydiving company who fucked up. I'm pretty sure it was totally 100% Rachel's fault. But hey, that's the her. risk you have. It was her. But yeah, no, you um, got to be careful on those landings. We we're very glad that she's okay. I wondered to myself, was this a, a did they allow Matt to have a hero shot? Because I can't imagine Matt, while strapped in, was the first one to make it to Rachel to make sure she, like she wasn't like paralyzed or right because it looked like Matt was the first to come to her, right? I, I can't surely imagine it was a surely yeah. there was a medic and other people yeah. like, Hey, stand away. Are you okay? Can like, but like Matt, I feel yeah. like Matt got a nice hero shot there being he the totally first did. one coming. But there was a medic there as well. I remember seeing it. There was, shot. but yeah. not the medic was there after Matt yeah, had arrived after he ran and he his, ran like, over Baywatch run. And, and, and rolled her over. And I'm like, yeah. no way, no way. I but, love this. I love this behind the scenes wisdom. It, it must it must have been I, I, I don't know for sure. But although yeah. if, if that's not the case, then the paramedics they have on site are we're, we're also playing words with friends. <laughs> Whatever. Well, like, if, well, you're produ- if you're in a production and you don't if you're doing skydiving and there's not a medic sitting right there, like you're breaking yeah. so many laws. Yeah. There no, they're all there. like, <laughs> uh, that was their nightmare. <laughs> yeah. You know, that was a li- that was their literal nightmare because like, yeah, she could have like. 
she's about to meet her parents. Yeah. I mean, thank God she. It looked worse than it was, and it's maybe like she game had some day for production paramedics. So, well, yeah, but because if <laughs> if Rachel was more seriously hurt, she could have had some incredibly seriously br- serious yeah. serious bruising that wasn't covered by makeup. And then you bring oh. this girl home whose parents are already nervous; they haven't seen their daughter yeah. in a month, yeah. and she comes oh. in and her half her face is bruised, or she's got stitches, or yeah. God knows what. Yeah, that that's a nightmare for what them. What have those paramedics been doing anyway? Like, yeah. what somebody roll off a couch? But you know what? Like they <laughs> threw Matt a bone. Matt is a very attentive man, uh, yeah. who uh, he, he handled it. He handled it as best he could. So did she. She was a good sport. Yeah, we love to see it. Yeah, she um, did. Skydiving is totally surreal, and when you hit the ground, it's you are you are you're in a yeah. you're in a different place. And you're right. Let's throw Rachel bone for yeah. playing it off, and and she a lot of a lot of people could have made that whole moment just very much about them and and yeah. dramatized the experience but it sounds like mm-hmm. she was like hey i'm okay it's okay okay can we can we talk about a victoria in that situation i think it would have been oh my god the queen <laughs> yes the chateau. had the queen fell on her face i think yes she would have handled it much differently than than rachel yeah. that's a that's she a would, she would own disney uh rachel uh we meet rachel's parents um yes, we do Rachel's parents are playing the role as as every season we have the very uh-huh. skeptical parents, the very reluctant parents. It makes a lot of sense too because parents do know their kids the best. They can read uh, their kids, and I think my guess is Rachel came in very starry eyed, and they probably are seeing their daughter kind of like, oh, she really likes this guy. Yeah, she's all in. Yeah. They, they yeah. see that their daughter's all in, and now, as any parent would do, you're just like, wait, shit, my daughter just didn't go on a TV show. This, wait, what happens? Like, that's what, what like, my this parents, when they, went, when they went to my first hometown, my parents are not very, they're not the parents that, like, watched the season and were experts. Like, they're not delusional. Like, they're here on planet Earth. They had heard of The Bachelor, but they didn't know much. You know, they're not hell. You know, my parents were unique because they had so many younger kids that their adult son, they weren't like all up in their business. So when they came to my hometown, there was a lot of like, so what is this? What is going on? What is this show? What are the expectations? And they, you know, producers are like, well, you know, they're narrowing it down. And at the end, this will happen. And they're like, what? (laughs) <laughs> this is what my son is involved in. And there's like a real sense of panic and urgency and fear. Now, I don't know yeah, I bet. how much, you know, Rachel's dad. Rachel's dad does not look like he watches The Bachelor at, at all. Ra- <laughs> Rachel's mom, for sure, maybe. But like Rachel's dad does not look like he's been, you know, tuning in every Monday at 8 p.m. No. no. Um, and so no, but he will he will use a straw with a highball glass, which I thought was an interesting. <laughs> I, like it was he wearing a lip tint that he didn't want to have come off on the glass? What was going on there? Like he just pulled the drink up, and I was like, "This, I, this is a choice." See, that's why this we have Dave choice. on for the attention and yeah, detail that I detail. I failed to pick up. Me either. Well, uh, it, was, it just it, it hit me strange. But yeah, but getting back to what you said before about being on the show, it and it, at this stage in the process, you are a little brainwashed by the process right you're a little bit you are you're a little bit in you're a little bit starry-eyed you're you know you don't know why you're behaving the way that you're behaving your parents in some ways know you better than anyone else so it must be a little bit like going to visit your kid in LA and she's you know she's taken a few Scientology classes yeah right? and it's like and there's yeah. a she's... slightly different look right yeah. and you're like I don't Half of her, half her head is shaved. It's purple now. And these are all fine things. And you're like, I love you no matter what. But like, there's been some drastic, you've you've made some drastic, you've, you've, you've changed course. And I'm just trying to get on your level. Uh, right. Yes, that's that's a pretty good yeah. analogy uh, in terms right. of what parents are experiencing. So the bachelor in Scientology. Yeah. <laughs> good you, analogy. You yeah. get, uh, <laughs> so you so Rachel's parents are playing the role of like, you, you you hear her dad say over and over like it, I don't know six weeks man yeah. like mm-hmm. okay and yeah. Rachel's mom yeah he's great but like nothing nothing's wrong with him and I I get it like I I get her I, I my guess is and you make a good point I didn't even think about that really until now is 
if you are worried that your kid is being, say, brainwashed or or at least being drastically influenced by the environment they are in, you're just trying to get them to see reality, right? Mm-hmm. Or you just want to check in and maybe, you know, it's like, are you are you sucked in or are is this really my daughter I'm talking to? Because yeah, like you know, her- Brittany, blink if you if you need. My help. Yeah, it's yeah. like yeah, and yeah. so there's a little bit of like he has, you know, you almost as a parent, I would assume you'd want to see some like healthy, like Matt's great, we're in love. Listen, we fight about this and we've worked through it, and there's the problems we have, and I don't love it that he does this, but you know, he doesn't love it that I do that. Like you know what you would, yeah. you would h- hope for any couple that's ready to get proposed, and clearly that's just not possible in that world. So. You know, Rachel's mom is, is, is looking for some realism when talking to her daughter about what's great about this guy she says she's totally in love with. And uh, that's that's hard to get in that world. Do you think it's weird that so, she was so she was so sidetracked with like Matt asking her dad for permission when her parents were clearly like trying to be like, why do you like this guy? And she's like, I all she was focused on was him asking for permission. Am I ever do I do I find that weird? I guess. But I'm just so that's that's pretty common. Right. I liked yeah. I love I was personally it's like she was blinded by it. Like she wasn't like into like what her parents were saying. She was just like, I just want to know if he asked you. I like, was too busy, busy being triggered by that moment as <laughs> someone who has been the bachelor. Clearly, the show has evolved while slow sometimes to be progressive. There's obviously a lot of talk out there of like, wh- you know, why are guys needing to ask fathers permission as if they are like some sort of property? Like yeah, back okay. in the day in terms of yeah. like where you would negotiate and be like, hey, so like I like that because just three or four years ago, that was still kind of a beat of the show of the bachelor asking the parents permission. Yeah. And that I, it's something I fucking fought real hard on tooth and nail. And yet Matt was able to be like, you know, I'm the type of guy who I don't want to like just do this to ask and have it be a beat. And I'm just like I was. I was very triggered yeah. <laughs> me personally about the fights. I, me. Did you have to, did you have to do that four times? Uh, I, I did it in my own way, but those were, they were, those were beats. They really wanted to capture with all parents. Oh. And, uh, I, it was, it was something that there, there were a lot of fights, uh, between myself and production on, and, and like of, of pushing back that I, I was not comfortable with, uh, because that was just kind of the show. Uh, and I, listen, when you're not thinking about kind of the sexism part of it, right? They're they're just like, we can't give anything away. That's just part of the show, you know. It's yeah. it's uh, and now they've seemed to just kind of not that make that part of the show. They've taken that part out. But to your point, Chrissy, it was important to Rachel, yeah. and because she said, I just kind of wish Matt would have asked my parents. Then then it become Rachel made it a part of the show. Yeah. Rachel brought it back. Because it was apparently apparent, uh, uh, important to Rachel, and that is, mm-hmm. I want the guy I get engaged to to check in with my dad, you know, yeah. and right. uh, and Matt didn't, which I I love that Matt didn't, but Rachel wishes he did. And you're right, why? What's the point? Like, yeah. aren't there more important conversations? But Rachel's never been in love, so she's just she basing this it. off of like rom coms and uh, and friends. And, and, and sitcoms that we've all seen, yeah. which again, no criticism on Rachel. Yeah, we've that's what we've that's what we all do. It's what we've done. Yeah. And until you are in love and you have these you start focusing on the shit that you didn't realize mattered, but you know matters. And then you realize like the shit I used, used to care about. That doesn't mean anything. Um, right. Rachel just hasn't experienced that yet. Yeah, she is. She is quite young. Um, I, I should. Point, OK, so there's a thing that happens. I got some years on you. I'm, okay. I'm turning 50 this year. Well, happy birthday. Bananas. Looking great. I would kill, so I'd kill for that <laughs> hair at 50. Thank you. Dave. Thank you very much. Please. <laughs> you're, you're, I, come on. Anyway, um, there, there's a thing that happens where you, your whole life, like rock stars or Olympic athletes or whatever are older than you, right? So like your whole childhood, you know, you watch the Olympics, you turn on MTV, whatever, everyone's older than you. And then, and then there's a shift where it's like suddenly they're your age, yeah, which yeah. is weird. Yeah. Like everyone, everyone's like your age, yeah. and like oh that's strange. And then in the blink of an eye, they're younger. It, they're all younger, than <laughs> you. yeah. and like you, you, the bands you like are like suddenly ten years younger than <laughs> yeah. you. you feel it. And you and you watch the Olympics and you're like, these are children, and I am the age of the coach. 
Yeah. And then of and the Hall then, of Famer. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> or like, or the 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 rock, you know, the the musicians who are doing like the you know tribute to Bo Diddley on the Grammys <laughs> that you go up and get a snack during. It's like those are the people that you listen to. Um, and then and then it's like, and then those people are way younger. Than you. I say this because um, it happens very quick, and um, like when The Bachelor started the contestants were generally in my age group, right? Um, and then and then they were younger. And then last night watching uh, Rachel's dad, I was like, I bet Rachel's dad is three years younger than I am. <laughs> yeah. And that shit happens in the blink of an eye. Yeah. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. That's so a... just I, as you're a, you're a strapping 40 year old, just buckle in. For, for that experience, <laughs> it will happen before you know it. It's happening. You won't notice yeah. it happening, and then it, then it will does. have happened. Um, so, yeah. Also, all of this is taking place. I'm sorry. It, 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 everything with Rachel's family is taking place in in the center of a truly staggering number of lamps and candles. <laughs> like I don't understand how why. Every decorating <laughs> accent is a lamp, but it's wild. Go back and look. Like every yeah, shot, it's like I'm gonna here, have to. Oh my god! There's a full Celine Dion video of lamps and candles in every shot. <laughs> that's the that's fully the art department. They yeah. definitely staged yeah. that before, but I, but it was just like the 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 direction is lamps. Yeah, Good. a lot of lamps. <laughs> We're going lamps here. Set the mood. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and, and you know, we'll close it. We'll close out Rachel's hometown, but there definitely was. I was almost kind of surprised, and maybe we'll maybe we'll get to see that FaceTime video with Rachel's dad if, if Rachel ends up being Matt's pick. But uh, mm -hmm. there wasn't a lot of closure there. Like sometimes yeah. we they'll have this like I don't know if you want you to marry my daughter, and at the end, right before they go, they're like, Hey, you're fine. It's cool. I was just fucking with you. I was just want to wanted to test your character. Yeah. But not with Rachel's parents. It was kind of like this reluctant, like, All right, well, don't fuck up my daughter. You know, yeah. like you yeah. know, there's a that felt real. But uh, so, but I only point that out because they're. We they might have they might be having us hang on to that tension yeah for that future FaceTime call with Matt that will inevitably be, be like sure of course yeah. you know I'll, you seem like a good guy and well, as long also as my daughter's to happy to make her have to make her, it was also used so that she would feel like she wanted it for security right so to her if he had asked that yeah. then she was the important one yeah so that is what made her start triggering being like oh my god there are other yeah, people you gotta here. plant and those they, seeds of doubt like giving brie the last uh, rose like even though yeah. even though there were still three yeah. roses yeah uh speaking of brie we go to her hometown and uh, i'm a big Which, fan was go ahead. i'm sorry i'm sorry no was it rachel or brie where matt had like the glenn plaid car coat because that too was a look and a half <laughs> I, I don't I love remember. It. Yeah. it was like a good, like a heavy tweed. It was gorgeous. Anyway, sorry. The, the looks last night. <laughs> He's only had one fashion miss for me, and that was the black and red, like Hunter Paul Bunyan Muppet jacket. Like, because it was oh. it was furry, and I was like, yeah. why do they put him in a Muppet jacket? But mm. I digress. Yeah, Listen. I don't remember that. But he had, he had a miss for me last night, which is which is oh, that was when Sarah went to. If go you're not up pushing your limits, then you're not me reaching your. Full potential. But like Muppet so you is have like to, Muppet should be like a hard pass for everybody. No, but I'm just saying like <laughs> you have to you have to see how far you can go. That no. was that was it for Matt. But if you're not doing that, you never reach your full potential. Yeah. So exactly just, right. just say no to looking like a Muppet. You have to go for it sometimes and be like, you know what? Pull it back. Pull it back. That's as far as we can go. Would you ever wear a jacket uh -huh. that would make you look like a Muppet? <laughs> no, because you would be like. I'm smart, but I would be willing to try it just to see if I could pull it off. Because if I can, then good okay. on me. Okay, uh, and, that's uh, fair. Think of all the fashion areas that open up to you. Exactly. <laughs> first. No, you have to be willing to go there to see yeah. if you can do it. Um, yeah, Brie is wonderful. Uh, we get to see Brie. You know, she's still. We're, we're the whole you know, Brie's hometown is about. Hey, this still bothers me about my personal f life, and yeah, I know we connect on that, but. You know, sometimes people like maybe it's almost as if Brie was projecting. Like, I think she even mentioned this early on her first date is that like Brie values family 
it's close. Her mom's close to her, but she kind of feels alone now with her mom, like having a new baby and her mom has this life and and Brie even mentioned that the people she dates and friends with, she kind of counts on them to get that sense of normalcy that she finds with family. So this is still a concern for Brie. She voices this concern to Matt. We don't really know how much of them is it a concern for Matt. So it seems to be a projection from Brie in terms of like, I can't do this. But in reality, maybe Brie is missing something for Matt because Matt, she, she's worried that Matt can't do this for her. I don't know. Just just kind of psychoanalyzing Brie's concern for, for mm-hmm. Matt because Matt hasn't brought it up. He's like, yeah, we relate to this, but. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if this is the reason why it might not pick you, but Bree seems to it, it comes up in Bree's ITMs or her kind of voiceovers. Yeah. So also maybe she's just thinking something to say because it's The Bachelor. Yeah, exactly. So um, I will say we had to watch this no fewer than eight times to figure out who was who and and how it all fit together because it was Bree and her best friend Bree. Bree. You know that Spider-Man and, meme that's out there where Spider-Man's yes. pointing at each other? And Brie yeah. and her friend Brie were like, okay, you're Brie, you're beautiful. We're, we're definitely going to be... Be-. They were either going to be best friends or enemies. There was no <laughs> yeah. in-between. Yeah. Right? Yeah, the Brie's have to unite or it's, it's chaos. Um, but then it's Brie's mom and her little sister who is a newborn. Yes. Yes. Which... Again, talk about like you have this woman has got to be 10 years younger than me. I wasn't entirely sure. I'll be honest. Who was Bree's friend and who is Bree's sister sister in the first 10 seconds? Yes. Of the day. Yeah. I was like, like, I'm pretty sure that's Bree's mom. And I got it right. Right. But I, 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 I held out for my own embarrassment to not to just wait and see. Be like, all right. Like because her friend could be her sister. 100 percent. They look alike. yeah, or or my best friend or her my mom. Sister. Her, her her mom looks great. Like her yeah. mom is a young woman. Yeah. Yes. But it, so yeah, I mean, I, I think we could identify the mom, which leaves other Brie and a newborn. So she's like, I, I'm. It's my best friend and my little sister, and the best friend a little bit looks like like you would buy her as her sister. So there was truly a moment of like, is this woman's best friend an infant? <laughs> Like, what am I not understanding? Could you imagine? <laughs> that would be fucking great. This is my best friend. I g- listen. She if doesn't she talk doesn't, much. If she doesn't like you, <laughs> I don't know if this can work out. Exactly. If she cries She's as soon as you touch her, we're, it's over. And you bring out yeah. a six-month-old. You yeah, you can't ask her questions yeah. right now. But Who immediately she'll be able shits to her react. pants when you hold her, and she's like, "Sorry, sorry, gotta I go." I don't think you make That's her. her you make her nervous. Change her diaper, That's and we'll thing. talk. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it, and then just adding the the same name to it, it was fully who's on first. We could not like we really had to keep rewinding. But I think I think I understand yeah. what's happening now. I think uh, um, I I like yeah. Brie. Uh, her pan, her 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 mom pointed out that she is a realist. I would go f- so far as to say that Brie has a bit of, of skeptic in her, which I appreciate, mm-hmm. or not so much a skeptic. But when Matt and Bree were on their daytime date and they're going through the mud in a Jeep and Matt yeah. gave her this kind of benign compliment, like, you're really good at this. And most people would be like, thanks. But Bree, I really appreciate it because Bree's like me. I would go, you think? Really? Like, what do you mean? I'm driving. You know, like <laughs> he gave her such like a, you know, he was just being nice because yeah. Matt is clearly a nice guy and Matt knows how to say nice things and he knows how to compliment. And I really love, I really, in that moment, I really appreciated Brie because she's like, that's a useless compliment. I have no idea how sincere that is. I'm simply just driving a car. So I'm going oh. to question your compliment. And I, I really appreciated that. Now you can also, like oh, too. it's also a sign that Brie has been through life. She, People have disappointed her in the past. Apparently, this ex-boyfriend of her. So, like, useless compliments don't work on her. Oh, my God. I feel yeah. so dumb because I would never – I've never analyzed that at oh. all. Oh, I picked yeah. up on that right away. I'm like, Brie. What a great detail that I did not think Smart cookie. Oh. She was just like, don't – don't save that bullshit for Rachel. That doesn't work on me. <laughs> uh, and what a nightmare to be followed around by cameras and to have a microphone on to catch all of the – ridiculous bullshit 
that you say in any given day. Oh, yes. <laughs> that you just say to, to have something to say. I'm yeah. pretty sure Bree's friends, if they listen to this podcast, will will know that I have Bree pegged as someone who you can't easily compliment her. She, You have to really, mm-hmm. you have to really mean it. And she has to think that of herself, you know. But anyways, but you're also right. And, 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 wisdom that we're getting from Nick Vile right now. And, and anytime you're right that uh, people are you know, like with Matt kissing with his eyes open, put a camera on yourself for 24 hours and just live your life and go back and watch it. You will be horrified. Yeah. Anyway. How are you with watching yourself, Nick? I've gotten used to it. I mean, I used to back in the day. I was like anyone else. Like when I would record like uh, like, you know, back in the day where you would actually take the time to be like, hey, you've reached Nick. I'm no longer at my I'm at myself. It'd be like, oh, God, do I sound like that? Now I'm fine. I mean, I podcast. I've been on TV, but it was a I had to get used to it. I had to like become indifferent towards it. But it was hard. It was hard. Yeah. Now you put wigs and dresses on. No, it's it's just like I am who I am. You know, you're just who you are. I love it. Um, building an empire. Bree is uh, <laughs> Bree is uh, afraid to tell Matt, and I, I really like this moment because it's felt really sincere. She, I related to Bree also in this moment. Again, being the skeptic, being the realist, being the person who is all those things truly, but also found herself on The Bachelor, which is a world that's not based in reality or or grounded thinking. And yet Bree sincerely likes Matt. It's how I kind of felt about Andy, where you're just like, okay, I don't know. I'm going to be open to it. And then you're just like, fuck, I like you. And you feel yourself having these real feelings while every part of you is telling you this is a terrible idea. Like, this is not smart. This goes against everything Bree has told herself, everything she's Every, everything that she has developed over the years to protect herself, to like make sure she's making grounded and good decisions. There's another part of her saying, fuck it, Bree, just go for it. Tell the man you love him. If it feels right, YOLO. And she, you can see that real struggle that she's having. Yeah. Um, and uh, she, she decides to go for it and, and tell Matt that she is falling in love with him. Um, and uh, more, some more than others. I really felt for Brie in that moment. I felt the real struggle because it it went against everything that she has told herself that she should do to make sure that she's making grounded choices in her life. But it was probably is and and to that sense, probably good for Brie. You know, she is someone who, you know, can't get out of their head or or you become too kind of rigid in your choices. I think she will if she doesn't end up with Matt and I don't think she will won't regret that moment of going for it. And realizing she survived the disappointment, and it will probably be a good experience for her. Nick. You have added a layer of <laughs> uh, of pathos to this situation. You have you've truly here, here my my full notes for Brie. Little sis is baby. Mom is aus. That's pretty much all I had, and she's a realist. Um, that was pretty much the extent of it. But you you took me a level deeper, and now now I am there. We go. I'm very pro Brie. All right. Well, let's let's move on to the final date where uh, okay. Serena P sent uh, Serena P sends herself home. Uh-huh. Always an interesting dynamic of is it Serena sending herself home? Is it her parents convincing her? Kind of to the point where I it almost felt like, and I guess I I, I suppose someone could do this. Like it almost kind of seemed like Kit was doing this, where she like Kit told herself, "I'm going to show up on this show. I'm only going to go so far." And then I'm going to leave myself. Ironically, Kit 21, Serena P 22, the two youngest are the ones who have left on their own, which Mm -hmm. good for them. To me, that shows a level of maturity of like, I'm not ready. That's okay. Yeah, I respect that. Um, I totally respect that. And uh, but you could see if for future people going on the show, I guess you could totally get away with. Listen, if I make it to hometowns and I show up. Because they don't get a chance to talk to their parents before they walk in the door on camera or in mic. You could just be like, if I show up and I just, you know, I scratch my face a lot, <laughs> that means I want out. That means I want out. So your job, the whole hometown date, is to, like, see the doubt in my eyes and, and, yeah. and be the ones who convince me. Because I don't want to be accused of breaking this guy's heart. So can you guys just play bad cop for me so that I can, like you know, come to the realization. I suppose the cast member could do that. I and, guess so. And get away so with is it. So this, is this your speculation on Serena P? It kind of felt a little bit of like, yeah, because she, other than the yoga date, she's like, I don't know, I'm bubbly, let's have fun today. They didn't open the date with, 
you know, sometimes they've done this in the past. We're just like, you know, I'm just, I'm really, you know, last week was tough and I want to get back to normal. I want to get back to where Matt and I were our first one on that. You hear this a lot. And there was no kind of like setting up what could happen. It was like Serena P being like, Hey, I'm looking forward to Matt. We're going to have a fun day and this is going to be goofy and playful. And like, I love Canada and I want to <laughs> show him Canada. It was this like, it kind of was set up to be like a normal date. And then you have that turn. Yeah. And then it was, and it was kind of once she met her family, her family was like, I don't know. I don't know. There's yeah. But I, I can see also that again, going off what you said about your emotional and mental process during this whole thing, it's possible that going home, or not home, but going, you know, being in a place where there's poutine, so you're in Canada, <laughs> and then seeing your parents would would be like, you're touching your former self for a moment, and that might be like a splash of cold water that makes you go, yeah. okay, yeah, maybe not. Yeah, maybe not. totally. I don't know. Um, but, I, you know, her, her family seems nice. I felt like they... I, I at first when I first watched it, I felt like there was a bit of convincing their daughter, and then I rewatched mm -hmm. it, and I I didn't get that the second time. It was just more okay. like Serena saying they're missing their gut. Now it did make me think of our Doctor Berman episode. I don't you pro, you know, but we had a Doctor Berman on who told us and taught us on this episode about relationships that sometimes the butterflies that we feel are a red flag. That what it is is our body telling us. You know, that that excitement is really our 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 ego saying, oh, we love this and this is exciting, but it's triggering because we know they might not be good for us. So maybe uh -huh. it's those things that, you know, we're to see, you know, the lack of excitement might be a reason to, like, keep digging and finding out more. Now, Serena P doesn't have that benefit in The Bachelor to, like, play the slow game with Matt. So, hey, yeah. she's like, fuck it. I'm not going to get to where I need to be. But yeah, ironically, it was the. Again, Serena P talking about this tragic heartbreak that her family like it, it, it was yeah. so interesting. This episode, you had these three women all be like, you know, that thing that happened and our family and, and everyone's family was like, yeah. yeah, yeah, that fucking sucked, man. Like it sucked it for us as much for you. And it was all these like real clearly they have to keep it vague. Yeah, they keep it vague. They don't want to talk shit about, you know, their exes or whatever. Yeah. Truly, it was just like a really it was something they were trying to avoid. And um, I guess for Serena P, maybe she should just listen to our Dr. Berman episode, because if she is looking for that intangible excitement that she doesn't can't explain why she likes a guy, maybe maybe she shouldn't fall in love with that guy because he's going to fuck her up again. Who knows? Right. I don't know. Well, and, and there is something you hit on something. There is an interesting element to this process where it's like. You do have a super like limited amount of time, right? You gotta you gotta meet a lot of different people. So obviously to get yourself to the end, you gravitate towards the ones where it's the smoothest. Where you might feel like some excitement, but it's also very smooth. And and like the people who annoy you a little bit, you get rid of because they annoy you a little bit, right? Yeah. But like for long term, somebody's gotta annoy you a little bit, right? Well, sure. Like you gotta there's gotta be like a little bit of tension, but this is not a long enough process for you to figure out what's the good kind of tension. Exactly. So do you just gravitate toward the one that you are most physically attracted to? Yeah. Sometimes that's enough. And sometimes I guess it isn't. And he spent the most time with her like alone time. Yeah. Well, she's the only one who got yeah, two one-on-ones. Yeah. Uh, and it, well, to that point, so like, you know, we all know Serena P leaves and uh, Matt leaves the hometown with like, I don't know, does she not like me? So I guess, you know, Chris Harrison comes in and apparently convinces Matt. He has to, you can't leave this hanging on, but you know, whatever. Um, yeah. And so, Matt goes to talk to Serena P and she says, Hey, I don't think you're my person. Matt looks really bummed. I've been really kind of going back and forth. How much does Matt like Serena P? I can't tell because is it, is it as, is it mu as, as much or more than Rachel or Brie? Uh, I mean, Rachel, I, it's not like Cassie runner. level for sure. There's those instances on the bachelor like that have set precedent where it's like, I want to go home and the bachelor. Yeah. The well, that was kind of my like, point. That's it. I'm done. I'm so going like Matt, person. Matt first looked really bummed and then he was like, okay, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, no, I'm bummed. All right. Say nice things, Matt. Okay. Matt says nice things. Can I walk you out? But you're right. Like Colton jumping fences had Vanessa left at hometowns. It would have been for me, the end of the world. It would have been, uh, yeah, you wouldn't know what to do with yourself. I, 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 
I think a Rachel Lindsay is incredible. I love our chemistry. Raven's great. Like Karen, cool hang. But like, I, I don't want to, I, I don't engaged. Yeah. Like what? No, like this is the right, you know, I would have lost my shit. And so to me, the way Matt, uh, let like the way he reacted to Serena P uh, leaving him was more of a, listen, I don't care how much you like or dislike someone. It's a very humbling experience to be the lead of the show where everyone's telling you you're the prize to be won. And they're like, uh-huh. you're not it for me. And uh, Actually, very, no. very humbling uh, yeah. experience. And I don't, it, it, it hurts. Absolutely. It hurts. And, and uh, even even when cameras aren't around, when you have been meaning to dump somebody and they dump you first, that hurts. Yeah. Even yeah. When I was going that you were about to end it, it's still a kick in the, in yeah, the gut. Yeah. Well, one hundred. You were going to do one hundred percent. But Matt, Matt is, is is he seems to be fine. And you're right. He doesn't react the way that Serena P was someone he was sincerely thinking he might uh, end up with. Is, is kind of yeah. how I read it. Yeah. As as Cher tells us, it's in his kiss. There was a moment where they kissed at the end of the date, and he was fully holding back. And I was like, "No, this is not. He's not. He's yeah. not it." Yeah. So I know good, his game. He's not it. Good, good on Serena P for leaving on her own terms. Matt was a gentleman. Exactly. He walked her out. He's okay. Uh, yeah. All three women. Quick, quick note for. I'm sorry. Quick note for production. If you're going to surround a place with uh, with flags, steam steam the flags. Steam the flags. <laughs> I mean. Thank it you was, for they that were comment. By Canada flags. Yes. That had just been taken out of a box. Uh, the Trump administration did this for the Republican National Convention. They surrounded him with with American flags that you knew that they took out of the Amazon delivery box. Because it still had the lines in it. <laughs> they still have the lines. Steam the flag. Just oh my God. Flags. That made my OCD. Takes five so, minutes. Thank you for doing that. 100%. It's great. It's great. Point. My OCD was Takes like. Five <laughs> It's a great point. I also just want to give Matt a shout out here. Sorry. High character guy. Uh, also likes to be challenged. He is surrounded by clues. Serena P points it out. And he's like, he, as soon as he asks the question, he covers his eyes because he wants to know if he can get this right, answer right without cheating. The man, th- this is a guy who won't cheat even when no one's looking. I, uh, I really, oh, I, I really, I really believe that. And that is character. So, so props on Matt. Um, all three women get roses. There's three ro- roses to give out. Bree is uh, a little nervous about not uh, of being the last to get the, the rose. Bree, I can assure you that doesn't mean shit. Uh, but um, <laughs> it's it's more. Do they? Who, it's so more who, It's more who needs it the most, or who who would react the most without not getting it. You know, and that might come from The Bachelor and that might not come from The Bachelor. If you really like someone and you see that and you see and you see your person struggling, you're like, I'm giving her the first rose because I just want to give her that. Go down the line. I just want to give her that small win. It's all about small victories in that world. And uh, for whatever reason, um, you know, Michelle, he wanted Michelle to get it. And uh, do they ever do the producers ever switch the order in terms of how we air it or or in post? Yeah, In, in post. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, yeah, that happens all the time. Um. Yeah. Do you guys want to talk about in closing Matt's uh hometown beer uh women tell all beard? I feel the women I mean, tell all beard. James Harden. <laughs> um, I like it. That was a shock when it came out, though. I was like, whoa. It's a totally different look. Now the big question is, this is a very different look. The big question is, is this like a off season beard? You know, like a playoff beard, so to speak. Yeah. That he will shave for like the Super Bowl as often athletes do. And he's gonna my point is is he gonna come out for AFR looking groomed and clean? Or is this a is this a new look he is gonna go with for the foreseeable future? Well, I, mean, I after, think that's really like, the big debate. Being in the fall yeah. in that place, like maybe he like became one. No. He started sure growing this after grow he got done filming. Uh, this is his like uh, this is like while the season is airing beard where he kind of, you know, because like in a sense, the bachelor has to hibernate. He he has to be very yeah. careful about his surroundings, whoever he picked, uh-huh. if he picked, you know, they're or maybe it's a disguise. They're in quarant- it's a disguise. They're in quarantine. There's a little bit of like uh, nervousness of like who's, you know, filming okay. me. I wonder I wonder if Matt's going to keep it or if an AFR will see a groomed Matt James. I'm going to go. Yeah, I'm going to really- go too. I'm going to say he's going to shave. And grew- you're gonna shave it. I yeah. need to see it in motion next week. I just, I really need to get used to it. It is, you know, just the the few glimpses that we got were. It was 
distractingly juicy. Distractingly juicy. Yeah. And like it's a shiny beard. It was it was like yeah. yeah. It was well taken care of. Like he's using the Very wax. Different. Oh yeah, he's Matt like is not a guy a, doing who it just nice. like Yeah. What Matt is a deliberate man. Yeah. And I don't care if he looks scruffy yeah that's a deliberate that's an act of choice yeah which now mm. living in montana i appreciate the effort someone would put to make their beard look clean maybe he's going for that beard oil sponsorship like he's trying to get maybe. ahead of the game Could. Maybe. Could be. Um, maybe he's gonna have his own beard oil line also possible <sighs> where that's 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 the uh, i mean nick's got the essentials locked down the essential oils yeah, yeah you can't so do that. That, that leaves the beard oil industry oil. open that that is true and, uh <laughs> <laughs> Dave, uh, this has been a ton of fun uh, recapping oh with you. Um, this has been a joy. <laughs> Dave, you uh, what a are, ball. are welcome back anytime. We'll be sure to have you back for, for future oh, seasons. Uh, can you please let our audience know where they can digest more of your work, uh, the things that you're writing? I know you have a book. Um, yeah. Just uh, share, share that with my audience if you sure. can, please. My book, Party of One, is available where books are sold. Um, I am an editor at large for Esquire magazine. Um, also, um, and this is the good thing about lockdown is you don't have to be in LA for this. Um, I do a, a sketch comedy game show thing at a theater called Dynasty Typewriter in Los Angeles. We're doing it online this Friday. It's called the Friday 40. It's me and my, my good friend, Scott Gimple, who's the showrunner for The Walking Dead. It's 40 questions about the events of the last seven days while we all drink 40s of beer. Um, it'll be, <laughs> uh, awesome. our contestants will be Karen Kilgariff, uh, Roy Wood Jr., uh, musical guest Christian Lee Hudson. Uh, it's going to be a ball. If you follow me on Twitter or Instagram, all of that. That sounds fun. That I, sounds so and fun. I'll be good comedy theater. Whether the lock. I, uh, can I can I be a guest sometime? Can I invite I, myself? Absolutely. Sounds I like think a, I asked you. Years I think ago. you did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and oh. then I, I'll make it happen. Yeah. You asked me, and then I think I said I don't know. Did you say I'm too cool? No, I definitely I'm replied. Just I, just, I remember that being the answer. Was, I, I, I definitely, I, I definitely I replied would, back. But I'm like so cool. Uh, I'm developing my. But it sounds like a ton of fun. It's a ton of fun. It's a really good time. Yeah, come and join us. You'll see. It's super easy. You don't, you know. Yeah, that sounds so fun. Drink beer. And just the fact questions. that you're drinking 40s. It's like a lost art. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's beauty in that, isn't it? <laughs> uh, Dave, thanks so much. Really appreciate it. Uh, as always, Thank guys, you. we appreciate you listening. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, rate five stars, sending your questions at asknick at castmedia.com, cast with a K for our Ask Nick episodes. Uh, we have a fantastic episode for you tomorrow with the very lovable uh, legend, Maria Menunos, to yeah. talk about. Uh, oh, uh, well, just uh, how to better ourselves, growing together, being better together. She is a very uh, open and honest person talking about her personal health struggles as well as her mother facing adversity and, and getting through difficult times. A very inspiring uh, conversation with Maria, and I am sure you will all enjoy it. So be sure to tune into that. Other than that, uh, <laughs> thanks for listening, and have a great rest of your day.